Hi, Mr. Wartsky here again, and today we are going to talk about how the molecules move across the cell membrane. So the first way that substances are transported into and out of the cell is by diffusion. So what determines the direction of traffic across the membrane? Most solutes or particles dissolved in solution want to spread out from each other. So they want to move from a high concentration to a low concentration. So here you have a high concentration. And they want to move to low concentration. So they spread out. So when particles want to move from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration, this is known as diffusion. So, for example, you can spray perfume in the class and pretty much the perfume will spread out throughout the room and then everyone will smell the perfume like an axe. Or if you drop food coloring into water, you know that the color will spread out. That is diffusion. Remember to pause this if you need to at any one time to get the information. <clears throat> particles will keep spreading out until the concentration is the same throughout the solution. Now once the concentration is the same everywhere, the particles have reached what we call equilibrium. So one more time, diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. That is diffusion. Pause if you need to. The process of diffusion is how some molecules move into and out of the cell. And since diffusion occurs naturally, the cell does not need to use any energy, and this is called a passive transport. Passive transport means that no energy is used from a high concentration to low concentration. Find diffusion, and why is diffusion a passive process? Hit pause if you need to. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a semi-permeable membrane. Right, so basically, we're just talking about water moving, nothing else, just water. It is also driven by the concentration of particles known as solute. So sometimes particles cannot move across the membrane. So instead, water will move across the membrane to even out the concentration. So right here, we have on the left-hand side here, a lot of molecules, not many molecules. So the molecules will want to move from this side to this side, right? But the molecules can't move across this membrane. The only thing that can move is water. The water, in order to equal out the concentration, the water will move to the left, right here, to equal out the concentration on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. That is known as osmosis. So we need to remember that a solution that has a high concentration of particles is said to be hypertonic. And a solution that has a low concentration of particles is said to be hypotonic. Hyper is a high concentration, and hypo is low concentration. So if we look in that uh, example that we had before, this side would be a hypertonic concentration. This side would be a hypotonic concentration. That again? Sure. So right here, a lot of solute, or not that many solutes in here. A lot of solutes. A lot of the environment has a lot of solutes, so the water goes up. The environment doesn't have a lot of solutes, so the water goes in. So when we refer to molecules in the solution, we refer to them as solute. The solute is measured in moles. That's the concentration of solute. A solution that has 0 0.8 molar or moles of a solute has more solute than a solution that has 0 0.4. So if we're taking a look at these two solutions, if we're comparing them to each other, 0 0.4 solution is hypotonic, it has less solute, and 0 0.8 molar has high is hypertonic, it 
because it has more sun. Hit pause if you need to. Now water will move from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution until the ratio of the water to particles is the same on both sides. The solution is said to be isotonic. That means it is equal or it has reached an equilibrium. So there are three questions here. Fine osmosis, not really a question. Two of the three solutions, which is hypotonic and which is hypertonic. Remember, hypo has the least amount of solute and hyper has the most amount of solute. And if the, salt ha if the cell has 0.2 molar salt to put into a beaker of water, that is 0.8. Which way does the water move? Into the cell, out of the cell, or into the, and out of the cell? the same amount. Remember, water always flows from a hypotonic to a hypertonic. Draw a diagram if you need to. Facilitated diffusion. Non-lipid materials cannot diffuse across the membrane as easily as lipid molecules. These substances must rely on special proteins called channel proteins, which we talked about before. These channel proteins or category of proteins are embedded inside of the plasma membrane. Remember, here's the plasma membrane. Here's the channel protein. Molecules can move to, to and out of them. This, remember, is an integral protein, also a transmembrane protein. Molecules are diffused from one side of the cell membrane to the other side through the protein tunnels. Facilitated diffusion is the diffusion of molecules through protein tunnels. It's basically diffusion with protein tunnels. Remember, high concentration to low concentration. That is facilitated diffusion. Since substances are still traveling from a high concentration to low concentration, it does not require energy or ATP, so it is a Passive process. Passive process. So, why you need it is because the molecules are not lipids and they have a hard time moving through the cell membrane. Now, active transport, as powerful as diffusion is, cells sometimes have to use energy. To move substances against the concentration gradient. What do you mean against? Well, things, remember, always move from a high to low concentration. If you move against that, you're moving things from a low concentration to a high concentration. This is called active transport, movement of molecules from a low concentration to a high concentration, and you're going to use energy. Down here, we don't have that many plus signs over here. We have a lot of plus signs over here. This is low concentration. This is high concentration. Molecules are going to move from this side to this side with energy. That's again, usually with diffusion, molecules are going to move the other way, from high to low. But active transport, they move from low to high. It takes energy for that to happen. Now, embedded in the plasma membrane are special transport proteins that use energy to pump molecules in or out of the cell. So here is the protein right here, right? The molecule binds here, energy in the form of ATP is used, and this protein flips. As it flips, it lets the molecule out. Then it flips back again, picks up another molecule, and flips, and releases the molecule. This is active transport, moving it from a low concentration to a high concentration with energy. Now, this is also, could be also the sodium potassium pump. Get used to this. You're going to see this on exams, on EOC. You're going to see that picture. Remember it. So the pro transport proteins are similar to the 
carrier protein protein can facilitate the feeding, but they're the ones that work in active transport, moving molecules from a low concentration to a high concentration. In addition, transport proteins require ATP or energy because they're going against the concentration gradient. Low concentration and high. Set it from high to low. Or hit pause if you need to. You hit pause now if you like. There's a lot of writing. So transfer proteins are usually only involved in the transfer of smaller ions or molecules. Transfer we have diffusion, facilitated diffusion, but now we have active transport which moves molecules against the concentration gradient. Only a couple of these diamonds over here. A lot of diamonds, including diamonds in the cell. So, when does the cell need to use energy when transferring molecules? It has to do with the concentration gradient. And what two things are used? I gave you a hint that one of them is ATP. So, hit pause and answer those two questions. And that is it for the video for transport. I hope it helped. Remember, you can watch the video over again. Phew. Have a good night.